Alright, going to do this video on Brian Dillinger and his pharisaical wickedness. This has to be called out, and I understand people are not going to like this because people don't like it when you call out their cult leader, people don't like it when you call out their, essentially their own little pope, and I understand that Brian's followers may not like me doing this, um, I guess I've had some of them leave very nasty comments on my channel, very wicked nasty comments, and this is the, the common fruit that comes from Brian Dillinger's ministry, it is bitterness, wrath, uh, strife, all that stuff. And pretty much anyone who has been a part of Brian's ministry and pretty much left can say that, yeah, you know, this is the common fruit that comes from his ministry. He's built up a cult of personality of people that just amen everything he says and just don't dare question anything he says. And anyone who disagrees with them, oh, you must be lost or you're carnal or you're this or you're that. You must be hiding a sin in your life or something like that. All kinds of wicked false accusations. But this one video, because Brian is just really acting like a Pharisee and this has to be called out. Because when you study what a Pharisee is in scripture, uh, Brian Dillinger matches the description perfectly. And I, I, I looked into it myself, I, I did this, look through the scriptures, and I'll be coming out with a video soon on the attributes of a Pharisee. Uh, Brian Dillinger is a Pharisee by scriptural standards. And just the video that he came out with about Proverbs, I think it's 24, 17, it's just all kinds of wickedness, just pride coming out of him. And it has to be called out. And if you don't like that, if you're one of Brian's followers and you don't like that, you don't like the fact that I'm kicking your idol, tough okay because this has to be called out all right sorry just had a bit of a uh, technical difficulties there but I'm going to show the video of Brian Dillinger doing this uh, absolute total wickedness this is on his channel on rumble I'll show you what he says here let's get the volume up loud enough he just shows that he has zero he has he just he's puffed up with pride and he's got he's just becoming so puffed up with pride that he just twisting scripture and ignoring scriptures that contradict his heresies and false doctrines and yeah there are heresies by the way the stuff that he says here oh your catalytic converter you know literally saw some some wicked child came out and he was rebuking me and saying that that god cares more about that lost thief than he does about me I said, how does that work uh no he's a lost thief god's wrath is upon him and i'm not going to take any sorry bluffering a little bit glory and whatever else for catching the guy and things i'm not going to take that glory away from the lord when that happens i hope the lord does something to stop the guy from doing it again and if i find out find out that one of my neighbors gets robbed and actually shoots the guy comes out and he, they hear him with his hacksaw or whatever underneath the vehicle cutting their catalytic converter off and they come out and they, poof, and they kill the guy good now i can sleep better at night i'm glad that that happened I'm not going to say, oh, he might have had a good, you know, thing, and maybe he wasn't given enough chocolate chip cookies when he was a boy, and, and that's why he turned out bad. Oh, and I just wish I could have shared the gospel. He closed his mind off to the gospel when he started stealing catalytic converter, converters. He had oh, do you see what he said there? He closed his mind to the gospel when he started stealing. Um, is that what the Word of God says? You see, this is the fruit that comes from Brian's ministry, and I have some screenshots I can pull up of some of because what he's doing is he's basically wishing death upon somebody and obviously you know there is a punishment for the wicked no one's denying that there is a punishment for the wicked people in hell and the lake of fire but this is the, but you see brian dillinger having this mentality of we should want you know death to come upon the wicked and that kind of stuff i'll show you let me show you some screenshots of the kind of fruit this has produced because the only fruit this has produced is just wickedness bitterness wrath anger hatred all works of the flesh, by the way, too. See Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. But let me just pull up some screenshots I have. Uh, let me try to find the ones. I have a folder of some screenshots they left me about two months ago, I think. I'm just trying to find those screenshots. Okay. Yeah, here it is. So this is one of, I have a screenshot here. This is one of uh, Brian Dillinger's followers named uh, Omar Gonzalez and look what he says to me in this screenshot this is about two months ago I took screenshots of this and saved them to my computer so he, him and I were going back and forth on this one video and the comments have since been deleted a long time ago but uh, watch what he says to me so we're going back and forth and he says go get vaccinated oh you already did one less devil to worry about pretty soon let me just zoom in on that so you can see it better so what he's saying basically, because obviously the vaccines can cause death. Okay, I'm not going to say too much because I'll, I'll get kicked off YouTube. But 
Notice what he's saying. He's telling me to get vaccinated and be one less devil to worry about because I'll die from the vaccine. Which, you know, I'm totally against these vaccines too, by the way. But look what he's saying there. He's basically telling me that he's basically saying I should get the vaccine and die, and he's basically, that'll be a great thing if I die from the vaccine. This is, see, this is the fruit that comes from Brian's ministry. And, you know, thankfully I took the screenshots before he deleted it, but wishing death upon me because I spoke against his leader, Brian Dillinger, and said that he's wrong to, you know, say that it's okay to observe this pagan holiday of Christmas. And I say back to him, rejoicing in death that shows your true colors, you of you wicked Catholics. Don't worry, I've taken screenshots of this conversation, and I will show this to everyone, anyone who thinks about yoking up with you and your wicked denlinger at devils. And, you know, didn't show the full comment there. But, you see, that's the fruit that comes from Brian's ministry. Bitterness, wrath, and wishing death upon those who speak against Brian Dillinger. It's that simple. This is this is this is not, you know, how Brian used to always be. And by the way, you know, back in Brian's early days, he was very humble. He had a lot of meekness. Had a lot of grace for people. But now it's all this pride, bitterness, anger, wrath, malice, hatred, envying, debating, strife, contention, all that stuff. But he said the thing of oh, the, you know, the thief. He closed his heart to God when he started stealing. Really, what saith the scriptures? First Corinthians chapter six verse nine through eleven. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. There were former thieves among the early church, among the early Corinthian church. So I guess by Brian's logic, they must have closed their heart to God when they started stealing. See the wickedness from that? See, really, he's no different than Stephen Anderson, really. I was part of Anderson's cult. After I got out of atheism, I became a religious atheist, and I was in Stephen Anderson's cult. Really, Brian Dellinger is not much different. It's, it's sad to say it, but he really is not much different anymore. He's behaving the exact same way, and his followers are behaving no different than the new IFB. They're just as rabid and wicked as Stephen Anderson's new IFB cult. But let me show you some more scriptures real quick. Let's just, let's just close this thing off. Uh, so it says, Ephesians 4.28, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may, give, he may have to give to him that needeth. Let him that stole steal no more. That would strongly imply that there were former thieves among the church of Ephesus too, but got saved. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use to edifying, use it to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from among you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You should be nice to the brethren, but keep in mind saying that oh you know they they're doing this they must not be they must have closed their heart to god because they're doing this type of sin that's wicked that's pharisaical that's that's nothing more than what stephen anderson does that's not, nothing more than what calvinism would say there were former thieves among the early church it's just it's just really wicked for brian Dillinger to say that. i just know other words it's just super wicked super unbiblical super uh very very prideful too in fact let me show you a scripture that's relevant to that why is it doing that Sorry, sorry about that sound, by the way. Uh, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. This is a scripture Brian Dillinger brought out, but this sadly describes him now too. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. And he spake this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. I'm a good man, I don't steal, I don't do this, I don't do that. Pride, all the way through, just pride, pride, pride. High-mindedness, arrogance, just like Satan in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to, 12 to 15. And a publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, but he that humbled himself shall be exalted. 
what Brian Dellinger is doing is no different than the Pharisees, the Roman Catholic Dark Ages, the Popes in the Dark Ages, and Stephen Anderson's new IFB cult. Thieves can get saved, saying that, oh, they can't, they must not be able to get saved because, you know, they're doing a certain sin. It's wicked. It's unscriptural. It's, it's nothing more than just carnal wrath, carnal, you know, envy, carnal anger. And I'm not saying that thief should not be punished. If he's caught, he deserves every right to go to jail. That thief who stole that thing from Brian Dillinger, you know, I hope the police do catch him. I hope he does go to jail. But to, to wish their death and say, oh, they can't be, they must not be able to get saved. You know, such were some of you. Like it talks about in 1 Corinthians 6.11. Brian, you were into pornography. You were into all kinds of wicked stuff. You were into video games before you got saved. So someone could have easily said the same thing about you. Such were some of you, Brian. That is, if you're saved, which I do have to wonder at this point. Because there's some things that, you know, indicate, you know... I mean, I'm not going to question your salvation. But, you know, the only, only way I'll know is if I see you at the judgment seat. So... Just have to, wait, have to wait till the judgment seat. I'm not going to say yes or no. Just going to wait till the judgment seat. That's all. But this is wicked. So Mark and avoid Brian Dillinger. Uh, it's his group. His ministry has become his ministry has just become a cannibalistic, Pharisaical, Roman Catholic, Calvinist cult. Mark and avoid it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.